YouTube is Brian Proctor back again with another video, and this is action post position number 20 something. It'll jump up down here. And this one I did because I had a few people ask me to draw a position, a character from the front, because they have characters that they're trying to draw and they wanted to draw a good front view position. So this is the hero stance, I call it, because every good hero has to make that good stand, you know, when he comes out when he steps out of the fire, so we say, and makes that pose, like a pose hero. So yeah, anyway, this is the video for today, the hero stance. So um, yeah, let's get on, get right into this. This is the finished product, if I didn't tell you. So yeah, just a couple more lines right here, a couple more lines right there. And this is the finished product now. So check it out. And um, subscribe, yeah, like that. A lot of people always say subscribe in the beginning of their videos. So I'm going to start saying it too. If you like what you see, subscribe, all right? Let's get into the hero stance. All right, so let's get going with this, the hero stance. Now, one thing about this is when you draw a position from the front, a standing position from the front with the arms just straight up and down, you have to have it straight. You don't want, you can't have it crooked. If this is a hero, he's not slouching, he's not, he's not leaning over. So what I'm doing right now is I'm drawing this little box in position. And the body's going to fit in there. I know it's going to come out, but I would rather start out small and have a lot of room to come out big. Because I'm, lately I've been tending, whenever I'm drawing, it's been coming out big. So what I'm going to do right here is measure the center of this box. And you do that from doing a line from corner to corner. Like that. And then do another one from corner to corner until you have an X. And you want to be precise as you can. Now, this is the center of your box, whether you go this way or this way. So what I want to do, I want to go up and down. Because this is going to be the center of my character right here. And that's how you measure the center of a box. Now, if I did this, if I did this, this way, then I have four boxes, one, two, three, four. So all I have to do is do an X here and find the center of that box and then cut it. And then I have a double box here. So and you can do that on and on and on. But that's just a little perspective thing. So what we want to do here first, and it's probably not going to be that wide, but I just needed this center line. So let's just put the head here. And it's got to be in the center of that line as well. And a lot of times I'll just do a rectangle just to make it more uh, centered so I can know it's centered in the neck. But all this is subject to change. I'm going to try to make it good size so that head is going to be small. That head is small right now, so we'll see. But I don't want the legs to come off the page. So first thing you want to do, and I'm going to try to do this in steps, is make the oval. And this is your torso. This is, you determine the side of the torso because that's the most important part. That's step one. Well, step one is to, yeah, do the torso, then draw a center line down through that torso. Step two would be determine where your shoulders are. And that's going to be a little under that line. And you want to draw that line straight across and then draw your delts. So I guess that would be step three. So you have that that goes across it like that T, and then your delts, which are just two ovals. Now from that, you want to make that upside down U or that mountain, like that. And that is your rib cage. This is your rib cage. This is the center part of your rib, the inside of your rib cage. The inside of your rib cage. Yes, let's just go with that. This is your stomach, where all your stuff is stored. So from there, you want to go. Straight down. Let's let's just do this. Let's from this point, this point. Let's go down a little bit. Just just enough for his waist. Just if you say his waist, or if you give a thick belt, it's about like that. You want to go down some more, coming out at an angle, just a little angle, or you can go straight down. I know John Byrne used to draw his characters from the lats, and then everything else would go straight down. But I like to give just a little bit of waist and then come out. Now, you have to measure all of this. You have to 
make sure this is not too long, this is not too short, this is not too uh, big for the head and so forth. But it's it's a um, a time thing. You have to just do it over and over and over again. And as I always say, this is your upside down house. This is just your house upside down. You draw your door, your windows. It's just a house. And I like to use shapes that people are familiar with to make drawing a little easier. So you have your upside down house. You have a rectangle. You have like a mountain. You have your oval with your mountain inside and your line. So from here, you want to do your legs. And that depends on how far you want to spread your legs. But he's a hero. So his legs are not going to be like standing like he's at attention. That's more of a soldier right there. So you're going to make the legs come out. And as I was saying, everything has to be more uniform. So let's just start with the inner legs. And then see about like that. That, that looks pretty good as far as being spread apart. So from there, you want to draw that oval. And this leg, this part of the leg, and this part of the leg has to be the same length. Not too short, not too long. I'm going to draw that circle. And then draw this other part of the leg. And it's fine that it comes out because I knew that it was going to come out of that. But I didn't want it to come too far out of this that rectangle. So a good way to do that is to be able to line up your page with a ruler and I have a little guideline not a guideline I have a little lift on the edge of my um, drawing table that lifts up and goes down so that I can put a ruler against it so let's just say this is the the uh, height of the knee this is the lower part of the knee so when I do this leg it will fall on the same spot now my the biggest thing is make it this one as wide as that one and shaped like that one so if I did a straight line down here it's like a straight line down here so that's the center of my knee here and then I did I, I'm doing the what shape is that like the um, I can't even think what shape this is for the lower part of the leg more like the funnel like this like that your standard drawing dummy shaped leg same thing with this one remembering that you got a center line here but your legs are going to be curved so you have to make sure that these line up down here and looking in my monitor i think that's a pretty good length so with the arms the same thing with the arms you don't want to have the arms straight down like that because he's a hero and he kind of He's kind of loose, you know, he's kind of have that stand like, yeah, I'm here, boy, ready to fight, whatever. So you want to get the arms out a little bit. And when I do arms, I usually curve them. I usually, I always curve them because you don't want it straight and static, just a little bit of a curve. So you already have your delts, you have your bicep, which is an oval. And then you have your forearm. which is shape and it should come down around around about the crotch area the wrist should come down around the crotch area i might have to lower that down so let me do this other one and then i'll break into what i'm trying to show you to do and of course again they all have to line up i'm trying to be perfect here you see already this one is lower than that one so this, as I said, it's got to be near the crotch area. So let's just do this. Let's bring that one down. Now, what I did was with this part of the arm, let's draw an arm real quick. You have your delt, which is shaped like this. I guess if you had a water drop, you could draw a drop of water like that, and you turn it upside down, that would be good enough for your delt. So it's like this, your bicep comes around, because your bicep is round like that. Your tricep comes from behind because it's, it's wider. And that's a bigger, the biggest part of your arm, or the biggest part of, the biggest muscle in your arm is your tricep. So if you're working out at the gym, or planning on working out at the gym, and you want big arms, don't work so much on doing curls, work on um, working on your, your bicep tricep like dips and um, overhead what is that overhead 
something. I can't think of the tricep exercise. And then you have this arm, and this arm is turned to the side like it will be in the drawing. It's going to come out and in. Same thing with this one, but it's not going to come out as far. It's going to come out and in and then down like that. Now, if I can think of a shape for that, I would, but I really can't. It's going to curve, curve like that. Now, this is going to come into a V point because when you, when you hold your arm out like this, and this is your fist here, when you hold your arm out, your bicep is going to be stretched like that. And this is your tricep on the side. It's going to be on the on the um, back because it goes into your chest. This is your, your your this is your tricep. Let's slow down, Brian. This is your bicep. This is your tricep. Your elbow, and this is your forearm. Now the the bicep is going to be long like that. Now when you do a little muscle kind of thing, I don't know what they call. What's that called? Your bicep is going to peak up like that, leaving some space right here like that so this is going to be round and it, because it is round it's going to leave a little dip right there a little triangle and your muscle splits right here like that so and then of course your hand is down here and this is the same as for your leg your uh calf it's pretty much shaped like this and your knee would be here and then your upper part of your, your thigh is going to be right there you'll see when we when we get to that point so we have this. Now, where you have your collarbone, let's remove this top line because I don't need it right now. And I'm being cheap about breaking out a new pencil because all my pencil, my red pencils, my erasers are pretty much gone. And I have a pack of these, but I'm just being cheap about breaking them out. So we have that, but we also have this little circle left over here. Now, you should have that center line. You want to do the letter V like that from this point out. You don't want to make it too wide and you don't want to make it too narrow because that determines the size of your neck. So when that V hits the top of this circle, then you go straight up. And as I said, that determines the size of your neck for your character. Now, what you have left is this and this little piece of uh, shoulder. That has to be wider. So like where this line hits this ball here. That's where you want to start your shoulder and you want to bring it up to this point on your neck. So from here, you want to do that. So where this line hits that ball, which is right here, you want to bring that to there. And that's how you do shoulders. And it has to be centered. So both these sides of the neck have to uh, match up. And then from there, you do the size of the head that you might need. And we'll, we'll, we'll worry about that size later. And you don't want your head to go past your neckline because it makes your hero look smaller when you have a head here and you have a little teeny neck like that. It doesn't look really heroic. So if you have your head And then you have your neck going down the same distance. So when you do your circle, you might as well come like come straight down on the side of your circle. That makes your character look a lot more heroic versus this. So yeah. So you wanna you don't want that circle, as I said, you don't want that circle to or that head circle to come any further than your neck and we'll come back to that later so with this with this with this remember this shape right here this is the same thing we want to do here and just give it just a little bit of a curve around just like that same thing here out and then all the way out and around like that so then you want to just bring it up fill in this part right here Like that, and then your knees, your knees somewhat go, they don't really center, but they move out more to the side more, but just for, no, I'm not even going to say, just for the sake of drawing, let's not put it in the center. No, let's just move it out off center, 
So, where's my pencil? This is the center line here. Your knee is going to come, your, that center diamond, let's make this a diamond. That line would not come through that diamond. So, if I did this, that's your knee. That center line is not going to come through there. That center line is going to be a little off that diamond. More like that because your knee is kind of outside or more of the outside than so much uh, center because your feet are not it doesn't come center line and your feet are like center your feet are always out just a little bit to support your weight so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stop this and look at this because I might make the leg just a little longer for this guy. Because you want your heroes to be a little taller. Another thing is your upside, your house, your upside down house. You want to leave some room, round that off in the crotch area for the man package. The man package, the man package, yes. And then curve that in. Same with women, same with women. You curve it, you round it off because the legs go up like this into the um, area. I can't think of what that area is called at this point. Your waist, hips, your legs go like that, but it's covered by, you know, your underwear or whatever, pants. So, and then you see some buttocks a little back here. Just a little back here, just a tiny bit. So yeah, let's put a foot on this guy. Let's put a foot on this guy. So usually I will cut mine. Is it that way? I cut it that way, yeah. And then bring the foot straight down and out. Well, this is nothing new to a lot of people. If you've been you've been with me for a while, you've noticed that know that I always do this. And it's just part of drawing. The more you do it, the uh, better you become. And again, the foot has to be on the same line. Let's check it. So you see that that one foot is way up and I always draw off like this. That's why I say stop and look or walk away and then come back and look at your pictures and you'll see your mistakes. You should. You might not know what it is, but you'll see something is off. You'll say, hey, something's off. But your, your brain, especially if you're uh, a beginner drawer, might not be able to pick it up and say, oh, it's this or it's that. Just like. This is thinner than that, so I have to widen that up. So you cannot have a character with you know one small leg, one big leg. It has to be basically balanced. So the hands, and I'll work with the details of that. So the hands, we're gonna bring in like that. Just do this. So this, if I made a triangle like that, I guess that's the easy way to say it. It's gonna come in, it's like I did the foot when I brought this line like this and this line like that. So you wanna bring this line like that. Bring it in, down, not too much. Like that, so you would be drawing that, that triangle there. Because it's your fists, your fists are bent in. You don't want to you know, your, your fist just straight. If I'm a superhero, I don't stand like this. I'll be like, ready. Like that. And we'll do the fist in a minute. So, now let's go back up to here. So, of course, this is your inner rib cage here, the inner part. So, your chest is going to be just a little above that. Now, one thing I did forget, this point and that point, make a line like that, more like, let me do the other one as well. You wanna bring it in. <clears throat> so you have this, you have this, you have this. So at this point and this point, this point and this point, you don't wanna make a line straight up and down, you wanna kinda of curve it in a little bit to show that you have some roundness to this because the chest comes across and then it curves around basically like that. So. By doing this, you show that you have some roundness, at least to yourself. So we'll do the chest, and then it'll curve in like that and up toward the 
uh, delt because it actually goes into the delt. It turns around, it curves around, and then you have that, that, that teardrop shape. And that's gonna be, let's just put it in the center. It's not really centered, but just for the sake of arguments, let's put it in the center. A little point here. Now the difference between a buff hero and a regular hero is that make the delts fully um, seen, I guess you could say. Because a lot of times people don't, they'll just do the chest and this part of the delt is invisible. I'll do one side and leave the other side and I'll kind of show you. They'll do this and then you have your delt like that and it'll stop and then you have your arm. But I tend to like to do the chest all the way like that. Then I have my delt. It just, to me, it makes it look more, more powerful. This side will look more powerful. Is my camera trying not to focus or trying to focus? So yeah, I'll just bring the chest all the way up like that. Is that actually centered? I think it's more shifted over this way or more shifted over that way than, than the other. So let's just bring that chest over a little bit more. Bring that delt out a little bit more. Bring it up a little more. As I say, it's, it's, this is your hero, so he has to, he has to be right. So let's get rid of this. So I still kind of, eh, we'll go with it. So I'm going to put a little bit of a, a lump right there, a little upside down U to separate the chest. And then curve it like that. Curve it like that. And then you have your collarbone, which is a V right there. And it goes up into your delt. And exit the same place you put that, this here, the same place that touched, you want to kind of come through a little bit more. Just bring that line through in the center. Because the delt has three heads, just shaped kind of like. Okay, let's just use this example. Turn it upside down. It's kind of shaped, it has like one, two, and a third head back there. And when they say head, three groups of muscles that are kind of like that. Like that. So I just usually show the first one because that's more pronounced than the other ones. The other ones, yeah, it's more pronounced. Get off the pencil. Bring this up a little bit higher. Now, everybody wants to do the abs. So with this, that's coming up, let's round this off here. This line went straight up here. Let's round that off here. You have this right here, make it a little darker. Let's add a little bit more right here. So you have this, make it a little darker, and add just a little bit more. And that's your lats, your latissimus dorsi. So yeah. So bringing it down, a lot of times it's good to do abs, but sometimes it's just best to do the line. So right about, let's just say where this is curved. I don't think you have a guideline because this was a messed up curve. So your first set up here are wider than your second set or higher than your second set. So let's just say where this, and I'm, I'm losing it because there are so many steps of doing this. If you take your, at this point, if you make a triangle, a good size triangle, your nipples will hit that triangle. Now, if you take a line that goes straight down, what? There was something I was trying to get at that I just lost. So anyway, we're not doing, you know, the naked man, but yeah, we're doing the abs. Okay, so let's just do this at this point because it should have been there. But at this point, bring this line in and then that line in as well. It doesn't go straight down. It actually curves in. Because here, you have your waist. You have this. Where this hits your, um, your hips, it curves in. 
and that joins that line there. So it's going to do like this and go down. And that makes that love handle right there, which is called, I don't know what that's called right now. I know what it's called, but I don't know what it's called right now. So anyway, let's just, let's just do the abs. Let's go one, two, two, four, and then six. Rough this down a little bit. Six. So I'm going to bring this one curved. Make that curve like that. Second one, curve that, curve that. And then the third one, curve that, curve that. Now the other one actually curves the opposite way and goes down. But since he's going to be dressed, you're not going to worry too much about that. I want to curve this up, curve that down, down, like that. So basically you want to leave some little space between that. And let me look at this. My ad might be a little off. I hate that it's not focused. I have to turn my autofocus off on this phone because it'll blur in and out. Every time I move, it'll blur in and out. But you turn the autofocus off. It takes some of the clarity out, but I mean, you can still see the picture, but I bought the thing so I can make more clearer videos. So we have this at this point, this curve, let's bring this up here and bring that up there. And then two lines here. So that's going to be like an extra muscle here, here on this extra line that we have. That's going to be your lats behind here, but you have like a little, like a thing, like a, um, uh, lion fang. You have like your three ribs. One, two, three. One, which you should be in right here. One, two, three. And they're not really pronounced. You can, but I usually don't. Just, just, just enough to know that the person's got these well built. So what are we getting rid of? We're getting rid of this line. We're getting rid of this line. That line and that line. Now this is wider than the other from what I see. We're going to get rid of this and we're going to get rid of that because we're not going to make it puff out. We're going to have it straight like that. And down. So now let's work on the arms. So this is a circle because as I said, that, that bicep is more of a circle like so. The tricep is going to come out more and then in. Maybe not that much in and then your elbow back here. This actually turns into a circle and splits. So you're going to have that line like that. This one's going to come around and some of the muscle can come in like so. And there's a whole lot of muscles that run down this arm, but I am going to do a video on that later because you have two bones. And it's hard to explain. <clears throat> you have two bones. I don't want this to come through my paper. You, well, you have your thumb and you have your, your baby finger. You have two bones that actually run down your arm like that. Now, whenever you twist, whenever you twist your arm like that, these bones will cross each other. like that and that gives you that extra lump in your arm so I would pull back and say like this if I turn it you'll see like this little edge here you see that bone that crosses over and that gives you that that extra piece that that line that runs down this way towards your thumb so it would be let me resume my drawing it would be comes down and runs to your thumb but I just take it like halfway and leave it at that so we have this we have your arm like that your arm we have your bicep you have your tricep here now you can always opt to make the arm bigger um, but you don't want to have it out of proportion that's one thing about um, the perfect body you don't want to have the arms so big that he just looks too massive, muscular, you want to keep the proportion. You can make it bigger if you choose, but 
I, you know, if it's like a Hulk character, yeah, yeah. But if it's, you know, regular Captain America type hero type, yeah, you keep the, keep, keep it in proportion as best you can. So, working on the legs, working on the legs. Look at that leg. So that knee goes down further than that other knee, and it comes up further than that other knee. So, let's drop this down. Let's keep the knees where I had it. Now, you have, you have a muscle. On the, on, the, on the inside, it comes like this. It's kind of like another teardrop. You have another one on the, that's inside outside, almost the same way. And then you have that little V left over inside. So you have this V, circle, and that. And then some people bring them together. I used to bring them even. You can drop it down a little bit. It doesn't have to be way high, but... In between that is where your knee is formed here. This one is touching the knee. This one will not. So your knee is there. And that's why I said the knee is more outside than inside. And then you have the skin comes down and the muscle actually comes in behind that and then forms that shin bone. It comes all the way down there to form that shin bone. And you have your ca your calf, which curves in more and then down. So if I could do this. You have your knee here. Now let's do a smaller knee. Like more like a diamond. You have one muscle that touches that, curves around. You have that V, and you have another muscle like that. So if I could glue it, it would be more like this. And then that knee fits under there. You have the skin that comes around that knee and down, kind of like down in the center. And this is your shin bone. And then under that, you have your calf that comes around. And then you have your other part of your calf that comes around. And this comes down to the side, like where your ankle. And then you just have this other piece of meat on the sides of your knee. And everybody has like different knees. Some people have wrinkly knees. So and this is the rest of your leg here because you have that V that comes up. And then... As I said, you chop it at the angle. The foot comes in and out like a diamond, and we'll get into that in a second. So, 32 minutes into it. Let's speed this up a little bit. So, as I said, it comes around, and this is just on the inside, and then down. But I don't usually take that line all the way down. I just take it in and stop it right there with my calf, and then around, bring this calf out a little bit more. And then down, bring this calf out more and down. You have your ankles, which if you have boots or something, inside one is higher than the outside. Another reason why I put that line like that, because your outside ankle is lower. That's kind of a reminder. I already know, but yeah. Now, we have to do the fist, the foot. And since it's a boot or a shoe, it's not, not um, and that is way higher than that. Yes, it is. This is not a, uh, since it's basically going to be a boot, because I'm sure that everybody, unless you're drawing like a, a Aquaman or something, even he has boots. Who is it? Namor. It's going to be like that. Half a triangle, half a diamond. You take a whole, whole diamond, whole triangle like this. You split them apart. You have one like this, one like that. You put your legs on it like that, and that becomes a foot. Now you can put it like the toe angle here. Like that and erase that so this would be like the toe part of the foot or the shoe erase this and it becomes a foot you have to work on it though now sometimes you'll see it'll curve in a little bit and then that'll be your heel right here and then the flat part of your foot depending on depends on your stand your stand of your character like that you bring this in a little bit and then up Like so. So the hand, if I can draw a hand, you do this, your thumb is going to be here. So let me do this first because a lot of times I'll lose it. Thumb, that, and then your finger. Okay, so you have this. You want to draw this like this, almost like an upside down smiley face. This is your thumb here. So you have your, your um, palm. Right there, that juts out your thumb, 
and then this little curve here, this little half smiley face, and then you just turn that into the letter Y and you have your fist already. Now you can put one more finger here if you choose to. You don't have to. I usually don't, but I do. So you have this little ball here, which comes up to this little piece of square right here with the smiles and then it turns into a Y and then let me drop that finger down a little bit more. And that's a quick shorthand to do a fist. And I'll ink it in the wash and you'll see. You'll see it a little more better. After I ink it, and you can have part of the other part of the thumb. You don't have to show the other part of the thumb. So the other foot, the other foot, the other leg goes around like that. Uh, it's kind of like a football, I guess, if you do a football. This one here comes up and in, leaving that V here. And it depends on what type of character you have because um, runners would be more slim with more leg muscle. Uh, like the Captain America would be more overall roundness. Um, um, I'm trying to think of different types of, of fighters and so forth. You know, one would be more skinnier. One would have reason to have fatter legs. One would have, we have reason to have skinnier legs, depending on what his skill or her skill is. If he's like more of the, the, the fighter, I guess he would have more back muscles and more shoulder muscles, a slimmer arm um, for speed because the Hulk would not have that much speed because he's too big, too powerful. So that's what I mean by the type of power that person has that would determine the body shape. And I'm trying to think, and I'm looking and thinking at the same time. And I just erase that. I did erase that, but I just put that line back because your ribs would come from here. But I usually don't do that because that's too much. That's too much. All right, let's do this neck and shoulder. So your neck, you have that V. Let's erase this part in the center. You have your, um, I guess it's the Adam's apple. It's another V in here. It comes down to that point. And since your shoulders are rounded uh, i'll make them shoulders a little bigger make them shoulders a little bigger a little bit yeah and you can bring that delt out a little bit more you'll see an ink so your shoulders actually come around i'm drawing through it comes around and then up into the back of the head to the back of the skull this is this is looking through the the, the um through the head so you have this part here it's kind of like I don't know, I want to say like two sausages, I guess, but it's rounded, like rounded like that. So, so let me get rid of some of this before I continue. You have these two lines here. You have your neck and these two lines here, which are off, but that's fine. And because you have those two lines there, because I made one shoulder higher than the other, and I'm speeding now because I don't really like these videos that go too long. So you have that, you have that. And because you have that and this is a dip, it leaves that little V, that little dip, that little V shape in between. And once I ink it, I'll, I'll kind of show you at the very end. And then at this point, you put your head the size that you need it. And usually I will flatten that out, bring this up. Bring this up like this, flatten, bring it up to the neckline, bring it up to the neckline, and then straight up to the size that I need. And if I need, if it comes out too far, I'll just adjust the neck a little bit more. And so there you have that. Let me see if I can focus this a little better to clear this up because it's 39 minutes. Okay, so here we go. I'm, I'm, I hope autofocus is off. I'll, I'll find out in a second if it blurs. It's blurring a little bit, but this is the difference between autofocus off and on. I just have to work with this. This is a brand new phone that I bought. And 
you can see the difference between clarity and the non-clarity. So remove this because this looks like part of a uniform, which is not. If I can always find my eraser that loves to run around my room. Anyway, here it is. It's part of it. It's part of one, the old one. Yeah, remove this. I'll remove all of this stuff as I ink it. So this is what you have for your hero stand. This is your basic hero stance right here. For all those people who asked me for uh, to do a straight a straight shot. Not so much, but yeah, I guess you can call that an action pose. It is an action pose. And it's basically this finger, this hand is a little lower. I can see that. Um, but I'll, I'll, I'll ink it. Let's see what I'll do in the ink, but I don't want it to go too far. So let me go ahead and speed ink this and I'll come back with it and maybe do a little background or something to it because this is the hero stance. Out of the fire, the hero emerges. So, yeah, what more can I say? This is it. This is the end of it. I inked it quickly, rushed a little bit, but I like it. Okay, so if you are liking these videos like what I do, please give me a thumbs up. Leave a comment because um, from your comments, I figure out some of the next videos to do. And I also see what you guys need help with. So, yeah, please leave me a comment. Tell me what you would like to see me do next, and um, I'll see if I can work on it. So that's going to be it for this drawing. And um, I'm trying to think, is there something else I want to say? Uh, yeah, thanks for subscribing. All you new subscribers, thank you for subscribing. I do appreciate that. My numbers are growing, and you guys have been leaving a lot of great comments, and that, that helps me to actually want to do more drawings so again thank you for you for your comments thank you for subscribing and tell a friend tell that friend to tell a friend and tell the world to check out my channel all right the address is right up here i hooked it up so that you guys can go into my um playlist and i have everything separated now all my comic book stuff separated my speed drawings everything separated so if you're into Wanted to create your own comic book, you just go into that section. If you just want to do the action poses, I have that separated and I have a couple more things separated. So you can just see those particular videos without having to go through other videos to find it. So that would be a help to you guys if you're learning how to draw one particular thing or if you're wanting to get into one particular subject. So with that said, if I can't remember what I want to say, I'll say it in the next video. So thanks again for watching. Again, subscribe. Thank you.